Well, this is Catherine from Double O Kidney. Welcome to our journey together to a better kidney health. Cholesterol is a very serious matter for people with kidney disease. Too high levels of bad cholesterol can damage your arteries, your heart, and can raise the risk for rapid loss of kidney function. To make things worse, there is a lot of meat and well, lies surrounding cholesterol that will prevent many people from improving their health. For example, you may have heard that you need to limit high cholesterol foods if you want to lower your cholesterol levels. Well, it's not true. Talking about misinformation. Now, some good news. Once you have learned how to tell apart the lies from the truth, it will be much easier for you to improve your kidney health. Also, there are some very unusual home remedies I want to show you that can really help when it comes to managing cholesterol levels in people with kidney problems. But first, we need to bust some cholesterol-related meats. Let's start immediately. Dietary cholesterol is very bad for your kidneys. This is the undisputed truth about cholesterol, right? Cholesterol undoubtedly tends to get a bad rap. We really go out of our way to avoid foods that contain it. There is a reason why we do this. High blood cholesterol levels are a known risk factor for heart disease and for decades People have been told that the dietary cholesterol in foods raises blood cholesterol. And this is a lie! 50 years ago, with that limited understanding science had of how the human body works, this may have been a reasonable conclusion. Today, we know a lot more about how dietary cholesterol affects our heart and our kidneys. Truth is, the amount of cholesterol in your diet and the amount of cholesterol in your blood are very different things. You may actually need to eat more cholesterol-rich foods to lower your cholesterol levels. So, how does dietary cholesterol affect blood cholesterol? Although it may seem logical that eating cholesterol would raise blood cholesterol levels, it usually doesn't work that way. The body tightly regulates the amount of cholesterol in the blood by controlling its production of cholesterol. Yes, it's your body that produces the cholesterol you have in your veins and arteries. It's not the cholesterol from the food you eat. And this, in my opinion, can have an enormous impact on how someone with kidney problems should plan their diet. Indeed, when your dietary intake of cholesterol goes down, your body makes more. When you eat greater amount of cholesterol, your body makes less. Because of this, foods high in dietary cholesterol have very little impact on cholesterol levels in most people. But there is an exception to this rule. In some people, for genetic causes, high cholesterol foods actually raise blood cholesterol levels. These people are often referred to as hyperresponders. But even though dietary cholesterol modestly increases LDL in these individuals, it does not seem to increase their risk of heart disease. Actually, most people can adapt to a higher intake of cholesterol. Thus, dietary cholesterol has little effect on blood cholesterol levels. So, as we have seen, the correlation between dietary cholesterol and blood cholesterol levels is an ongoing myth. It was busted several times, but it still keeps spreading and it puts people's hearts and kidneys in danger. If you want to stop this lie, share this video with your family and friends and with everyone who may benefit from a better kidney and heart health. Now, this is not the only cholesterol myth. There is another misbelief, even more dangerous and more widespread. If the nutrition label shows no cholesterol, the food is healthy. When we think about foods that raise cholesterol, we normally think of those that are heavy in saturated fats. 
While zero cholesterol foods are usually marketed as healthy, especially for people with cholesterol problems, I mean, it's really straightforward, but is it true? Fact. Many no cholesterol foods are high in other types of bad fats such as saturated and trans fats. So, even if there is no cholesterol, the food is still going to be very unhealthy for you. Because unlike dietary cholesterol, trans fats are actually going to raise your LDL or bad cholesterol. They also lower your HDL or good cholesterol. And this is the worst possible outcome, since high LDL along with low HDL levels can cause cholesterol to build up in your arteries and damage your kidneys. So, be sure to check the food label for saturated fat, trans fat and total calories and don't trust a no cholesterol label. Another myth that marketing departments don't want you to know about. They always tell you that fats are the enemy and that sugar has nothing to do with cholesterol levels. Okay, this must be true, right? I mean, how can sugar possibly make your blood cholesterol levels worse? Well, if you do believe that sugar won't hurt your cholesterol levels, be prepared for a shock. In a recent study, sugar consumption didn't just raise several markers for cardiovascular disease such as triglycerides and inflammation markers, it even decreased the HDL or good cholesterol levels in participants. Another study found out that women who eat more added sugar tend to have higher levels of LDL or bad cholesterol. What's more, sugar is proven to cause inflammation. Inflammation can turn a cholesterol problem into a life-threatening issue. Sugar in the blood attaches to proteins and causes ages, advanced glycation and products. Harmful compounds that are formed when protein or fat combine with sugar in the bloodstream. This process is called glycation and it's linked to the development of many diseases including diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure and Alzheimer's as well as premature aging. So, what's to learn here? First, if you care about your kidneys, stay away from added sugar. Sugar is far more detrimental to our health than dietary cholesterol. Yes, there are a lot of very dangerous myths surrounding cholesterol levels and kidney health. Now, many of these myths started as lies marketing ploys created by corporations to sell dangerous sugary foods as healthy. I've talked about these lies in several of my videos. Now, these corporations needed to shift the blame on something, right? What they targeted is eggs. Eggs definitely get a bad rap for the bad cholesterol the egg yolk contains. Many people still believe today that since egg yolks contain cholesterol, it will increase your cholesterol levels, your blood pressure, harm the kidneys and the cardiovascular system. Well, as we have seen, that's a lie. Many things people think to know about eggs are not based on any real research or study. They're just misinformation. And while it's not recommended for people with kidney disease to eat eggs daily because they're too rich in protein, eating two or three eggs a week is really healthy. Eggs have excellent nutritional values. They're rich in high quality protein, which you need even in low amounts. But they also pack antioxidants, vitamin B6, B12, vitamin D, magnesium and iron. And these are some of the nutrients your kidneys need the most. 
always look for foods that contain vitamins of the B group, vitamin D, magnesium and iron because these are the most common deficiencies in people with kidney disease. Plus, egg yolk is also a good source of choline, an essential nutrient that plays an important role in mental health and heart health. Also, eating egg whites is actually a way to lower your cholesterol levels. So, if you're watching your cholesterol, put eggs back on the menu. As we have seen, many diseases that were imputed to dietary cholesterol are today known to be caused by sugar consumption. This is a shocking truth about cholesterol and your kidneys. Now, we have busted some cholesterol myths. What's not a myth is that having high blood cholesterol levels is especially dangerous for people with kidney disease. Both high cholesterol levels and kidney disease are risk factors for heart disease, the number one cause of death in the world. And while this situation needs to be taken very seriously, some lifestyle and dietary changes that involve eating a lot of more fiber-rich whole foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains, and a lot less saturated and trans fats and sugar can really go a long way in making you healthier. And if this isn't enough, don't worry, there are home remedies that can help. Actually, there is a supplement I've never talked about which can really do wonders to lower LDL levels up to 15% less bad cholesterol in the blood, according to research. And it is plant sterols and stainols. So, these are plant compounds. Substances that naturally occur in small amounts in plants. Many grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, nuts, and seeds contain them. Plant sterols and stainols help lower LDL or bad cholesterol by blocking the absorption of cholesterol from food. This forces the body to draw LDL out of the bloodstream in order to extract its cholesterol to make bile acid and hormones. In most studies, 1.6 to 1.8 grams of plant sterols per day for 8 to 26 weeks have been used to get the result. Now, the interesting part. According to the latest national guidelines on cholesterol, eating 2 grams of plant sterols or stainols a day can lower LDL by 6% to 15%. And that's a lot! It's what you usually will get from taking medications, but without the side effects. And since plant sterols and sterols have powerful cholesterol lowering properties, manufacturers have started adding them to foods. So you may also find plant sterols in fortified foods. Some brands of margarine, yogurt, orange juice, granola bars, and even tortilla chips contain them. Now, I don't recommend relying on fortified foods to get plant sterols or other nutrients because you would also be getting a lot of extra sugar, potassium, phosphates, and other additives. But there are also supplements available that only contain the useful parts without the additives and calories. Colest Off, for example, is the best known supplement of plant sterols and stainols. But you may also find other, less known brands with the same content of cholesterol-lowering plant compounds at a lower price. Shop carefully and ask your doctor if this supplement is safe for you. There is no reason to think that these plant compounds may be dangerous, but better be safe. And there is also another home remedy that's proven to help with cholesterol levels and actually with kidney health in general. Soluble fiber supplements or psyllium husk. Psyllium can help relieve both constipation and diarrhea, and it's used to treat irritable bowel syndrome and other intestinal problems. Studies have also shown that psyllium can lower both total and LDL bad cholesterol levels, which may help reduce the risk of heart disease and kidney problems. What's more, Psyllia may also help regulate blood sugar levels in people with diabetes. Metamucil is the best known psyllium product 
but psyllium is also available in less expensive store brands of supplements. How much do psyllium has supplements lower LDL cholesterol? In a meta-analysis of eight studies involving 384 people with high cholesterol levels who had been following a low-fat diet for several weeks, adding psyllium supplementation lowered LDL cholesterol by an additional 7%. Another well-designed study from the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Kentucky found that 197 people who had been taking psyllium for 6 months netted LDL cholesterol levels that were 6.7% lower than the 51 people in the placebo group. Now if you're purchasing a fiber supplement, make sure they're psyllium-based, not cellulose-based. Also, to get the most from this supplement, especially the cholesterol-lowering benefit, take one teaspoon of psyllium husk with a full glass of water no more than 15 to 30 minutes before a meal. The psyllium needs to be in your GI tract the same time as your meal. Once it reaches your stomach, it starts dissolving into a gel-like substance. It binds with the bile acids that form cholesterol and in doing so, mops up cholesterol. More cholesterol ends up in your bowel movements and less ends up being reabsorbed in the blood. What's the correct dosage? In general, each 2 grams of salvo fiber added to a diet will lower LDL cholesterol by about 1% or maybe a bit more. In the above meat analysis, the dosage used to achieve the 7% drop in LDL was 10.2 grams of psyllium daily, which is the equivalent of about 3 teaspoons daily of psyllium husk. The dosage in the Veterans Affairs study was the same 10.2 grams daily. That's a high dosage, more than what's usually recommended and may come with side effects, especially bloating and other digestive issues. So be sure to consult your doctor before taking this supplement, especially if you want to use it to lower your cholesterol levels. And this is all for today. See you next time and thank you for watching.